that that is uh, that that's one of the key initiatives of this whole effort uh, was to create a diagnostic algorithm uh, that certainly is intimately uh, in integrated with the treatment you know, protocol as well, which we haven't talked about yet. But make the correct diagnosis first. That's paramount importance. If you you know in the old days, I think people just kind of treated it all the same. Any ocular surface dysfunction got artificial tears, maybe a warm compress maybe lid scrubs and, and uh, it may be a prescription medication, but often not. Um, but that didn't really treat any specific subset of ocular surface disease and certainly not a subset of, of dry eye disease. Now, in sort of springing into the treatment, so if you can follow that algorithm and one, rule out dry eye disease in favor of some other ocular surface disease and treat the, like, let's say allergy, that's a big one, right? So a lot of patients who have allergy will complain of symptoms that sound very much like dry eye disease. And if you treat it with artificial tears, those patients will still be suffering. If you identify it as allergy with your clinical, with the triaging questions, with some of the diagnostic tests that we have that can rule out dry eye disease and rule in allergy, and you treat them for allergy with aller anti-allergy medications and drops and allergy, allergen uh, avoidance and prevention and, and shots and so on and so forth, those patients are going to be treated and they're going to get better and they're going to, you know, love you and thank you for treating their, their problem. Similarly, if you rule in dry eye disease and you have all of the, uh, the clinical, uh, the, you follow the diagnostic algorithm and you identify not only dry eye disease but the subtype of dry eye disease and if it's more evaporative or more, or if it's related to mucin loss or goblet cell loss or meibomian gland dysfunction or aqueous deficiency, then you can, our treatments are so specific now that you can sort of tailor your regimen to whatever that specific cause of the dry eye is. And that's really where this algorithm shines, and this is why, and again, it's appropriate for not only U.S. clinicians, optometrists, and ophthalmologists, but certainly people all over the world can follow this very simple diagnostic algorithm and make the right diagnosis, and then institute the right treatment to treat that problem. Brings us, you know, this is a full circle back to the definition of and this this concept of homeostasis and disruption of homeostasis and restoring homeostasis of the ocular surface. That is the goal in a broad sense. There are a lot of ways to do that. You have to identify the cause of the dysfunction and the reason why the homeostasis has been disrupted, and then gear your treatment to reinstituting homeostasis of the ocular surface and maintaining it. Ideally, with a minimum of invasiveness, a minimum of cost, a minimum of uh, patient uh, inconvenience, but you know, but sometimes with more severe forms of ocular surface dysfunction and dry eye disease, it requires uh, a, a lot of different treatments. And uh, as we've mentioned before, a lot of ocular surface disease and dry eye is multifactorial, and you have to kind of attack it at the various, uh, all of the various factors. You can wear contact lenses and have uh, an autoimmune condition and sit in an office with air blowing in your eye and stare at computers all day and maybe take, uh, you have allergies and take an anti-allergy medication that drive. So you, all of these things needs to be, you know, you have to kind of try to identify all of these causes and sort of treat each one. Uh, but all of it is an effort to restore homeostasis of the ocular surface and, and get patients comfortable. <music> term homeostasis we've been using but I mean in essence what we're trying to do is just to stabilize the tears and to, to treat not only protect the ocular surface but to improve visual quality yeah, by, that's, how, that's why we treat dry eye disease I think in, in essence uh, to make people more comfortable and see better that's a good question I think um, I mean there are lots of people peppered around the world who have an interest in this and publish on this um, but I think without the sort of worldwide collaboration, and there's certainly no other organization uh, that I can think of that's ever ever done done anything like this uh, in this space, um, you know, to get the world unified and agreeing on all of this stuff, the, the definition, the diagnostic uh, algorithm, the treatment protocol, and all of the other stuff that, you know, is in this report that we haven't even talked about, the basic science, the uh, the, the worldwide burden, you know, the economic burden, the quality of life burden uh, around the world, and um, what the, the causes and the pathophysiology, and all of the stuff that's in this report. Um, without the TFOS 2's 2 initiative, a lot of this stuff would be known, it's just it wouldn't be widely known, and it wouldn't be 
widely agreed upon and, and this consensus that some people who weren't on the committee who can look at this executive summary, the, 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 there's an even more brief summary of it, and of course the full report, which I do encourage pretty much everybody, any ophthalmologist or optometrist or ophthalmologist, to take a look at it and try to get through it. Um, because it is, I, I hate to use this word, but I have used it and, and I think it's a it's kind of, it's like the Bible. It's a Bible of dry eye disease and it is you know, the end all be all resource, you know, for this. Uh, and so this saves, you know, the, the initiative of TFOS dues saves people so much time in sort of going through PubMed and trying to find answers to various questions that they might have on a day-to-day -day basis, finding the right paper and the right evidence. It's been done. That's 150 people over two years did it all. We looked at everything that's available and summarized it and agreed upon it and, and ranked it as, as far as quality of evidence. And it's all there. Yeah, it's 400 pages, but it's better than the millions of pages of going through you know, PubMed and searching online and trying to find going through you know, the library, if, if people still do that. Uh, and looking through magazines and stuff. It, it's, it's the greatest resource for anyone who has any uh, questions about any of this stuff. It's all right there.